So we're going to be comparing the camera quality of the new Mavic Air versus the older Mavic Pro. There's been a lot of online discussions about the new Mavic Air and whether it's as good as it's stated to be. We're going to be flying both drones in gusty wind, giving the gimbals a good workout, and trying to maintain the settings of each photo and video as equivalent as possible. We'll be running them in D-Cine video setting with no adjustments to sharpness, contrast, or saturation. Sunny white balance, ISO 100, and we'll be doing shooting video at 4K, 30 frames per second, its highest quality. The camera shots will be coming out as DNG RAW files, which also create a JPEG at the same time. The JPEG here, which is seen as being slightly underexposed, is okay to work with, but the DNG file is where the power really lands. Much higher quality uh, and data is in there. It allows us to put it into processing later bring down the highlights, bring up the shadows, enhance the cover uh, color, and you see this, a much nicer quality image overall. One of the issues of the Mavic Air and Pro has been the focus. Uh, Mavic Pro does have a manual focus or auto, but uh, front to back there is some range on the focus. We'll pull the central 10% out of this image and have a look at the sharpness. This is an automatic sharpness and uh, it's pretty good. There's a bit of compression in the file, but overall, gives us a chance to see what the standard is. The Mavic Air right away, you notice that it's a, a, a richer look to it, which looks like almost a high definition image created. I'm not sure why that is, but it's just the default setting on the, on the camera. The focus from close to far seems pretty sharp to my eye. I had a look around. We'll have a, a pull out of that 10% of the central part again. It looks very similar to the a Mavic Pro, as it should be, they're both uh, one and two thirds inch sensors, 12 megapixel images. If we lay the Mavic Pro image over the Mavic Air and compare them head to head, there's almost no difference between the two. I think you'd be a very hard pressed without a, a extreme blow up to tell the difference between these two images. Both cameras allow the option to take multiple exposures, uh, adjusting the exposure level on each shot which uh, is great because it allows you to go in later and pick out the best one and then uh, manipulate that in post-processing to get the highest quality image possible. Very nice feature. You can also manually turn down the exposure. I've gone from uh, an underexposed shot here to auto exposure and you can see the uh, highlights definitely lightening up. We're going to take a very challenging backlit shot here. We're going to use a Panasonic Lumix FZ1000. It's got the one inch sensor which is pretty much where the Mavics are going to be going. And we're going to compare the center and edges of the lens, as well as the highlights and shadow areas of the image. We'll take that center quarter out, flatten the image down, pull up the shadows, and this is in video processing software. You can see that it gets quite noisy, but we can pull out some detail in the shadow area, which is quite useful. If we compare that to the Mavic Pro, you can see we have pitch black. It looks useless in terms of the shadow detail against the blown out highlights. But let's have a look. We'll close in on that uh, quarter of the uh, central part of the image and see if we can uh, do anything with it. We've boosted up the shadows, we've brought down the highlights. I'm going to apply a little bit of sharpening in, in post-processing here. You can see how noisy it is. There's a real chatter going on in the image. So it's not a very, uh, neither of these small cameras can really handle this wide exposure very well. The air, uh, as to be expected, is probably similar in terms of the processing and the uh, one and two and third sensor. We'll flatten the highlights down a little bit which gets rid of the blown out areas, pull up the shadows, that's okay. Uh, you can still see there's a fair bit of noise going on here. It looks like a little bit of building distortion as well. There's a little bit of angles on that house that uh, doesn't look quite right angles. So the video then we're limited in what we can really do with it but let's try a photograph. We'll do a raw image from the Panasonic one inch sensor, lots of uh, data to work with from that and a nice image looks pretty black in this original one but when we pull out that area you see how much we can lift the shadows pull down the highlights, add a little bit of sharpening and actually get a very usable photograph out of the whole area. Again that's the beauty of a DNG or a RAW file. If we take the Mavic Pro, it looks pretty useless on the original JPEG from that DNG file but if we pull out that area Again, we can bring up the shadows, pull down the highlights. Very usable picture in here. Interesting, I'm starting to see a little bit of distortion in that building. So there is a little bit of edge effect in the lens on the DNG Pro.
or the Mavic Pro. We take the Mavic Air, same thing. Pretty grim looking JPEG initially coming from that, that image, but let's close in, boost the shadows, bring down the highlights, sharpened up a bit, a little bit of edge distortion as you can see. A fair bit of noise in that image as well, but overall, not bad. And I don't see a whole lot different from the Mavic Pro. We'll lay that uh, Mavic Pro image on top of the Mavic Air one. And much like that earlier one you saw under bright sunlight conditions, not a whole lot of visible difference to me here. I'm not quite sure where all that controversy is coming from. I think these are almost identical in terms of quality of the images. There are many differences between the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air, but I hope I've shown you that I don't think camera quality and image quality is one of them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and happy flying. Bye.